Welcome to Success Is Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Portman, serial entrepreneur, author, and podcast host. Whether success for you is more money, time with your family, a healthy, well-balanced life, or freedom, I'm interviewing guests and getting you the advice to make it happen. So join me as we uncomplicate the complicated, help you define success, and give you the strategies to make it happen. Hi, and thank you for joining us today on the Success Is Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Portman. Joining us today is the founder and CEO of Ball of Fire Coaching and Ball of Fire Inc., author, motivational speaker, and coach, Bernadette Bose. Thank you for joining us today, Bernadette. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Awesome. So let's kick it off with, tell us, what does success mean to you? Oh, wow. Success. Uh, success means to me just living my truth. Uh, I'll I'll say, um, and what that really looks like for me is, um, as much as I've never been in the space of like woo woo, <laughs> I'll call it woo woo, uh, but I have realized over the last, especially uh, eight to ten years, that for the first twenty five, thirty five years of my career and my life, um, I would say from about twenty to forty something. I really lived for everybody else. I lived for what everybody else thought of me. I lived for what uh, power, position, and prosperity could give me. I lived for uh, putting on masks, for um, hiding all my fears, insecurities, and negativities, what I actually call bitches in my world. Um, but at the same time, putting on masks that I thought would help me navigate whatever part of my life I was dealing with at any point in time. And yet I learned very, very hard in uh, late 2007 when I was fired by my mentor of 12 years from my longstanding corporate career and a relationship with him for about 12. And in support of both, both of us supporting each other in climbing the corporate ladder, ladder and really achieving some great success. I really learned then that... Um, not only did I really have to take care of myself, but I had to figure out what I wanted, not what everybody else wanted, not only from me, but for themselves, but really what did I want out of life? What was going to make me happy, feel, feel fulfilled and give me the riches that I was looking for. And therefore what used to be success and riches to me being power, position and prosperity it evolved into really wanting to know who I am inside and out at all levels, whether it's easy or hard, painful or joyful, but then acting and, and living that way and not, not, um, not being someone that I'm not because I want to make somebody else happy. And so success for me is just living my truth and then just really doing whatever I need to um, not selfishly, but selflessly to really be uh, the, the person, the, you know, the being, the sister, the friend, the lover, the um, CEO, the, the um, vendor, every, you know, the partner in every aspect of my life being what I feel is going to make really great relationships and really great um, results from living a full, truthful life. Yeah. So it's, you had a, obviously a, a huge transition moment. And um, for our, our listeners, um, it, it wasn't an easy transition, right? I mean, there, there was that down. I think a lot of people look at successful people and they think, well, they've, they've always had this vision this journey, this thing, and, and they led to it. They saw years in advance and worked it out. But I would argue that's not the way it works. It didn't work that way for me. And and uh, from what I gather, it didn't work that way from you, being that right. you were fired from a previous corporate position. Yeah. Can you describe your experience and and how it, how it changed you? Wow, uh, sure. Uh, well, I would first say... Uh, how it changed me was completely like every cell of my being. And they say that every seven years, your body actually um, rejuvenates every single cell within your being. And if you look at, you know, who you were and what you looked like and how you felt at seven, 14, 21, 28, you probably could see that, oh yeah, I, you know, that I, I kind of completely went through a change. 
and that's all physical. That's all kind of external. I'll say uh, my transformation was all internal. So here I was standing in the middle of a parking lot with a pink slip in my hand and a single box of my 28 year career in late, late, late 2007. You know that, you know, that Monday after Thanksgiving weekend, and it's a long weekend and it's a party weekend. Uh, you know, I dragged myself into work that, that morning very early. Cause I was really excited about the work I was doing, the projects I was closing the year out with, but also what was coming in 2008. And yet about 30 minutes later, I found myself in that parking lot, mm. totally confused, perplexed, angry, um, just flabbergasted. And yet there was a part of me to this that I at that time didn't understand, but there was a part of me that was also very excited and I kind of was totally okay with it, but it was such a small part that all that other ugly emotion, you know, kind of took over for a while. But I did walk away from there and I said to myself, a mentor of 12 years just doesn't up and fire and let go of that type of relationship unless there was something more to it that I obviously was completely blind to. So I just decided to go on a kind of a, a journey. I call it my excavation of my soul. And I just went on a journey to kind of discover like who was I and what brought me to that moment in time, uh, you know, kind of wrapped up in all of those emotions. And so I'm a journaler. I don't know if you journal or not, but I've been journaling since I was about eight years old. My father passed it down to me. He was a big journaler. And so I just started scribbling. And, you know, the empty journals that covered up my house. I just started scribbling and trying to figure all of this out. And I was going through my days. I did immediately start a um, uh, coaching and consulting business um, immediately following, you know, that that day. And yet at the same time, I was doing a lot of this inner work. And I was on a run about a year later. Uh, I was on a jog in the park with my dog at the time, Charlie, and we're on a run and I'm running through my head kind of, and I had been for this year, year and a half, all of the, you know, these experiences, encounters and events that had happened to me over the last 25 years that would have brought, you know, my mentor to up and fire me. And so as I'm jogging and I'm sweating and I'm, you know, and I'm kind of really in my head, I just all of a sudden saw her. Like I all of a sudden came face to face with everything that consumed me for the last 25 years. And I physically fell to the ground in a pool of shame and disgust and humiliation and just was uh, embarrassed um, just such ugly emotions because I f saw myself for the first time, uh, the real self at that, at that moment in time. And that was one of a very nasty, insecure, curt, abrasive. Some people would call her a corporate tyrant. Others, like I wrote my book is, is simply a corporate bitch. <laughs> and I saw her in all of her clearness. Lord. Yeah. So prior to that, were you, do you think you were putting some of the blame externally before that? And that was kind of the internalizing moment, or did you recognize from the beginning that this was a you, a you journey? I recognized from the beginning that it was a you journey, not to say that I wasn't very hurt and felt very betrayed and felt, you know, and felt some anger. It wasn't like intense anger or bitterness, but I did feel anger toward, you know, what had happened and who, who was instrumental in that. Yeah, sure. um, but I just knew at that moment in time, seriously, in that parking lot, I just knew something that big doesn't happen without any responsibility on myself. And mm -hmm. I quite honestly, I think it also, I was ready like it was as if I was asking for it, yeah. you know, and I was yeah. ready to say, wait a minute, I haven't been accountable at all throughout my life. Now that's not to say I don't own up to my mistakes and all that, but more so how I was behaving more. So all the inner 
inner um, junk that I was projecting out. I just never took accountability for that. And, and I knew in that moment, this is about me. Mm-hmm. It's not, it, yes, there's some elements of other people, places and things. And that's what I reconciled in the year and a half of that, what I call that excavation of my soul. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I just knew that it, it was me. And therefore it was me that had to do the work. Yeah. 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 So I think that kind of leads us into your, you talk about life as being 80% mindset, 20% skill set, right? Mm-hmm. And and it sounds like part of that is that that moment where you realize that it was you, but because it was you, you had the ability to control and change it. Mm-hmm. That kind of aligned with what happened to you in this journey? It was. Um like many, many, many people, um, especially corporate, even more so than entrepreneurs um, or just, you know, uh, regular people, everyday people, um, we're so consumed in the skills that we have in, you know, in our capabilities and our resume and all the accolades and the certifications and the awards and the, the company logos and the school logos. We're all so consumed in that, that rarely, and I was too. I mean, I was too. My, you know, my title was critical to me. You know, how big my office was critical to me. Um, How much money I made was critical to me. And yet I started realizing that none of that contributed to my being fired. None of that, it wasn't due to lack of skill. It wasn't due to lack of productivity. It wasn't due to lack of contribution. It wasn't due to lack of anything, again, external. It all had to do with who I was internally. And so when I realized that, I started thought, thinking to myself, okay, so how do I start shifting this? How do I start transforming into this person? And so two parts to the answer to that question is, so I came up with a formula of stages that I were, were very clear that I was walking through as I was going through my, my journey. At the same time, and I'll get to that, but At the same time, I also started realizing that I needed to start focusing on my mindset, on my level of confidence, my level of security, my level of self-belief, my level of self-worth, because it was all of that that was driving me to lash out and to be this this nasty person that wasn't genuinely me. Um, And so that's when I started realizing that mindset really trumps skill set in anything and everything we do in life, because we could always be taught a skill, um, but we can't leverage that skill and we can't optimize it. And what I'll say as exploit that skill, if we're not confident and secure and uh, determined and empowered about the fact that we have those skills. And so, you know, I kind of, te- you know, coach and, and teach, your skill sets just fine the way it is right now. Spend all your time working on whether or not your mind and your heart and your soul is where it is to leverage all of that skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So somebody coming from the corporate world like you were, it, it sounds like you were almost self-destructive. <laughs> are, are there any things that somebody in their job, been there for a while, can start identifying early on as potentially going down that that path of self-destructive behavior? Yeah, sir, absolutely. So, um, you know, in any way, shape or form, and I started, you know, with it, with my routine first thing in the morning now, all the way to the end of the day. But if we each as individuals can actually spend minutes, you know, just thinking about, okay, so where's my head at? around how I feel when I get up in the morning. Am I agitated? Am I excited? Am I tired? Am I energized? You know, am I optimistic? Am I feeling negative today? Um, And, you know, as they're going through their day, if they could pay attention to it. So if they are self-destructing on themselves, if they are walking through their day and they are, they're, they're bored at work, they're agitated, they don't like their boss, um, you know, they're, you know, they're not relating and getting along with their team members. Well, that's all starting inside, you know, that's all starting within them. And so if they, if people can 
self-diagnose themselves proactively um, to whatever state of being they're in. And if they don't like that state of being, to shift it mm-hmm. into a, a more, you know, positive, constructive, you know, place, all of a sudden they might see that job that they don't like, or the fact that they're bored or they don't like their boss becomes a lot more solvable. Like it becomes a lot more doable because it's their mindset of how they're going into that situation that is driving, you know, the result, which is either self-destructive or constructive. Mm -hmm. And so that morning routine I mentioned is, you know, like first thing in the morning, when I open up my eyes, I don't budge. I just quickly, you know, go from toe to head, head to toe. And I just kind of ask myself and go through like, how am I feeling? you know, from my toes to my head, head to my toes, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all aspects. And if I don't like it, and if I feel like I'm going to get up because I didn't sleep well, and I'm going to go up, get up and go out in the world and be agitated and be, you know, touchy and emotional. Well, then I just sit there and I kind of say to myself, okay, what do I need to kind of get energized? You know, what, what mantra, what song can I play? What, can I tell myself that I'm going to be like, uh, you know, yes, I'm tired. I didn't sleep well, but you know what? It's not going to stop me, you know, and just come up with whatever you want to come up with. But, you know, so when you put your feet on the ground, you are in control as to your, your, your question. You're in control as to whether or not you go out in the world agitated and pissed off and tired, or you go out in the world optimistic and, and excited and energized with a smile on your face. And trust me when I say, if someone could pay attention to that and then say they make a decision just to stay agitated and frustrated and tired. At the end of the day, look at how your day went. And I can guarantee you, you got exactly what you put out, Mm -hmm. which was agitation, tiredness, frustration, emotional. So your whole day was filled of crap that was just spitting back at you what you're putting out into the world. And if you went out and you decided to shift and you went out with a smile on your face and energetic and, and, and optimistic and positive, then I can guarantee you people were smiling, you know, to you, you were having great conversations, a a boring meeting became somewhat not so boring. I won't say exciting, (laughs) but not so boring. Yeah. Um, You know, so you are definitely in control of how the universe responds to you based on what it is you're putting out there. And, and so I go back to that woo woo statement. Had you told me uh, like eight years ago, 10 years ago that I'd be talking about all of this, like mindset, empowerment, woo woo stuff. I would have told you, you were nuts because in corporate, I was so robotic. I was so Mm -hmm. non-emotional. I was so, you know, just heads down. Transactional almost. Right. 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 Yep. Yep. So is that a a mindset that you can have in the corporate world or is it because you're an entrepreneur now? No, you can definitely have, because I work in corporate now. So I avoided corporate for a long time because I, I thought I'd be triggered. So when I went, when I left corporate, people were like, why aren't you going and coaching and consulting back in corporate? You know, I wrote my book, Shedding the Corporate Bitch, and people were like, why aren't you promoting it as a tool for the corporate or, you know, world? Because that's what it's about. I'm like, I can't. I'm like, I can't. It's a trigger for me. It's uh, I just I don't want to go down that that space again. So like you just asked, I thought it was the environment that would that would create all that. And then through my through my excavation of my soul and my shedding process, I, over the years, I've realized, no, it's how I come into it and how I, you know, contribute to it and, and yet at the same time, take from it. And so I, you know, I would say I got started working back in corporate four years ago. And so that was eight, 10 years later, um, after I left and, uh, I, I am, having so much fun, so excited, have great relationships. My leadership style is completely transformed and very different. And you can, you can live in corporate and thrive being a kind, um, humble, compassionate, empathetic, 
uh, giving uh, individual and you don't have to go down the 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 hall that I went down. <laughs> yeah, no, and and I love how your reaction to you know talking about an external factor was like, no, absolutely not. It's me, right? Like I'm the one because when you blame external things and external factors, you're giving those things control over you, mm -hmm. right? And when you say, no, it's me. If I get fired, if something happens to me, it's because of me, right? right. Now I have the control. I can do something different. I can change right. it, right? Yeah. Yep. So ball of fire, what's the story behind that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was funny because, um, you know, I thought I was going to be in corporate for ever. And um, I had spoken to my mother at like nine going, oh, I'm going to be the CEO of the world. Um, and so when I, you know, all that happened, I went out on my own very quickly and I immediately um, created the Bose group, my a coaching and consulting practice. And I was a very polished, formal corporate executive. And, and here I had, you know, all the resources in corporate when I was in corporate, I had all those resources. And so here I'm acting as if I still had all of those resources and I am like making all these beautiful glossy um, brochures and folders and business cards and my website. I, I you know, spent like twenty five, thirty thousand dollars in the first like four months, you know, oh, making so sure my presence because I'm still vain at mm -hmm. this point, I'm still vain. And I'm, I want to make sure everything looks, you know, so corporate and polished, even though I wasn't working with corporate and the name, the Bose group. But I would say, even though my docket was full, it was the recession of 2008, but my docket was full. I had, because again, I was working on my mindset and I, I never even in corporate, I never allowed my clients to boohoo. I never let them like fall into the trap of whatever was going on around them. So I, you know, in, during the recession, um, I acquired a large client list because I wasn't allowing them to focus on the boo hoo of, you know, the fact that we're in a recession. So, but at the same time for about a year and a half, two years into 2010, I just never felt congruent with the Bose group and how I was presenting myself. You know, I was still wearing the really pretty dresses and high heels and a lot of makeup and, you know, walking around very, you know, kind of stern. I was still yeah. kind of in my mask. And I went and was doing a public speaking event that happened to be hosted by a colleague friend of mine. And so I give her my very polished, formal resume with all the accolades and all the certifications and awards that I had. And I handed it to her so she could introduce me. So she looks, at, she's up on stage. Yeah. She's, she's looking at it and she rips, she, you know, kind of, uh, what do you call that? She, uh, she crumples it up. Crumples it up. That's the yeah, word I was yeah, like. Yeah. She crumples it up and throws it aside and says, I'm not reading that. <laughs> she's like, all you need to know about this woman is that she's a ball of fire. Wow. Well, every hair yeah. on my body you know, kind of stood up and I was so excited. And so I did my thing yep. and I run to my seat and it was early because this is now like 2010 and maybe two, late 2009. And so I'm like on GoDaddy on my phone, taking yeah. up all the ball of fire coaching, ball of fire consulting, ball of fire media. Ball of, and I was like, that's my, that's me. That's who yeah. I am. That's what I stand for. So ball of fire, um, and if anybody, because people will call my um, business line and my message is, you know, oh, thank you for calling ball of fire coaching, ball of fire media, ball of fire Inc., everything ball of fire. And <laughs> everybody leaves a message saying yeah. how funny that is. Yeah. But it really opened me up. It kind of, suddenly I just was shedding all of those artificial, going back to what we originally talked about being truth. Yeah, I, I just started shedding all of that exterior vein, fake persona that I was living in and just kind of st started stripping it away and really kind of just owning 
you know, the fact that I am, I'm a big ball of fire, you know, from morning to night. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, nobody else is like that, you know, and, and it's you and your identity. And, you know, I, I had a kind of a similar experience with, with public speaking when I was younger, I used to think I needed to be like that rah, rah, get everyone like pumped up type of speaker. And that is so not who I am, yep. you know? Yeah. And so I changed it to just more of having a conversation, you right. know, with the audience. And, uh, and that's more how, how I, how I speak. And, and I would joke around like, Hey, I need a, a pump man to get the audience going. And, but the feedback I got was no, people are captivated by what you're saying. Well, yeah. that is my identity, right? right. And right. it works for me. And now I'm much more comfortable being that person and giving those speeches. I think they're more impactful as a result of it. Absolutely. I my One of my best public speaking and actually solidified ball of fire and shedding the bitch, which is my brand, is uh, quickly is a, a public speaking event I was doing. The, the speaker in front of me was a fashion consultant. And he was telling everybody, because I'm still dressed in my corporate polished looking thing, high heels, pretty dress, whatever. And he's advising this women filled, you know, ballroom that, you know, um, that he can pick out very easily how someone's being inauthentic, unauthentic to their, who they are, because they're very uncomfortable in what they're wearing yeah. and they're just wearing it because they think they need to. Well, all of a sudden I'm looking at myself going, I'm wearing a dress that I don't want to be in. That is uncomfortable wow. that my too much cleavage I've heels on that hurt, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So all of a sudden I'm realizing, Oh my God, he's yeah. talking to me. Directly. So I happen to have a pair of my shedding the bitch slippers, fluffy slippers at, with me because I don't want to wear these shoes. They're hurting too much. And so when he gets done, I go and throw the slippers up on the stage at the front of the stage. And in like three seconds, I reformulate the whole way I'm going to present myself. And I get up there and I actually credit him. And I said, you know what, if we're going to, if we're going to spend the next 45 minutes shedding our bitches, may I make a confession that I really hate what I'm wearing right now. And so wow. I kicked off my shoes I kicked off my shoes. I grabbed the jacket. I actually put the jacket too up on the stage. I, I put the jacket over my dress because my cleavage was showing too much. And I was going this all the time because I was worried that, you know, and I didn't want to be doing that during a speech. And I said, and then I, and then I put my hair up in a band, in a rubber band. And I said, this is the way I'd rather be relating to you and working on you shedding your bitches. Yeah. And the whole awesome. room just exploded. And, uh, and I immediately went out and got some fancier robes, but I, I, you know, so that became kind of my uniform when I do, uh, when I'm doing specific topics, uh, and speeches, um, you know, because I'm, I'm just not going to be anything but myself. And that's kind of like in slippers. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Uh, you, yeah. but you're right. I think people can feel that confidence. The audience can tell that confidence. Right. And that is more important. I think that goes back to what you're talking about around the 80% mindset and the 20% mm -hmm. skill set. Right. If you're having to be a fake individual that is in that is compromising who you truly are, I would say you're going to limit the success you're going to have in life. Ab absolutely. That 80% mindset is success. You know, 80%, if you get to a point where you are focusing, you know, yourself every day, 80% on your mindset and be okay with the 20% skill set focus, that is success right there. Well, thank you so much, Bernadette, for your time today. And uh, tell the audience what you, what you have going on here, like. What do I have going on? Um, well, right now, uh, I really am heads down in some big corporate projects. Um, so, but for the new year, we'll be definitely focused on focusing on some new kind of live interactive engagements, uh, to help those corporate professionals really become powerhouse leaders. Uh, so right now, um, I do have out on my, uh, website, ballifiercoaching.com. I do have a free ebook, um, that's called the three must have myths of success, because we've been told things over the years that, you know, you have to do this to be successful and they are all bogus. 
And I finally wanted to get that addressed. And so it's a really short suite. And then it gives you kind of tips on uh, what you should be doing in order to get recognized and really polish um, your mindset uh, and your um, presence out there so you can get recognized and advanced. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for listening to the Successes Podcast. Well, thank you guys for watching today. Be sure to like and subscribe for more future episodes of Success Is Podcast. If you have any suggestions, please comment below. Look forward to seeing you next time.